Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Publisher V2 and in this video I want to show you how you can quickly put together a colouring book that you may want to print from home. So the first thing that you want to do when you open up Affinity Publisher is just set up your page to the correct size that you would like to use for your colouring book and I always find that A4 is always a good size for this kind of project. So I'll go ahead and select the A4. What we want to do next is just double check that your DPI is set to 300 as that is going to give you the best print quality. And as 300 DPI is the industry standard, it's always best to have everything at 300 DPI if you wish to print that. So what we're going to do after that is go over to our pages tab and we're just going to put the amount of pages that we want to use for our project. As a starting point, I'll go ahead and keep seven pages and I'll go ahead and hit create. So here we are inside of the Affinity Publisher interface and we have our seven pages over here on the left hand side. And what we need to do before we start this project is set up our margins. So we're going to go up to our master pages on the top left hand side where it says master A. We're just going to double tap on that one. And as you can see here, these blue inner lines right there are going to be our margins and we just need to go ahead and adjust these. And the way that we would do that is by heading up to the top left hand corner to where it says document setup. Just make sure that you have whole document selected right there. Then we're going to head over to where it says margins. And this is where we're going to set the margins that we need for our project. So before I go ahead and set these margins, I just want to mention that every single home printer will have a default minimum margin that is built into the printer. And that is something that you've always got to account for just to make sure that none of your content gets cut off. So I use a Canon printer myself and I know that my inner, my outer, my top margin all use 3.5 millimeter and my bottom margin uses a five. And with your printer, it could be a little bit different than that. You may just have to check your manual or just look on the manufacturer website and see if you can find the information for your minimum margins. However, just to continue, I'm going to use the minimum margins that my printer requires. So first of all, I'm going to set the outer. I'm going to put that at 3.5. I'm going to do the same with the top. I'm going to put that at 3.5. The bottom one is slightly bigger on my printer. That is around 5 millimeter. And with the inner margin, that is also 3.5. But what we need to do with the inner margin is we've got to account for having our spine. So we're gonna to need to make a little bit more room in the middle here just to make sure that none of our design goes into the spine. And we're gonna make that a little bit bigger and the size I recommend for doing this is probably a minimum of around 10 millimeter. So with that set up now on 10 on the inner, the outer at 3.5 with the top at 3.5 and the bottom at five mil, what we're gonna do next is go ahead and hit okay. And now we can see how our margins have all changed. And as you can see with our inner margin just in the center here, we've got a bit more space there to allow for the page to fold over. And the more pages that you're going to add to your coloring book, you're probably going to have to make your margins a little bit bigger just to account for those extra pages. And if you do find you keep creating additional pages, all we've got to do is go back into that document setup and just adjust that minimum margin again for the inner. Just maybe put that to 15 mil. Go ahead and just hit OK and that will adjust that for you. So for now, I'm going to leave that the way it is and we'll go ahead and start adding some content to this. So just before we add some content to our pages, what we want to do is make sure that we are no longer on our master page and we just select one of our content pages to start our project. So I'll start here on page one. Then to begin adding content to our project, what we're going to use is the stock library over here inside of Affinity Publisher. If you guys aren't seeing the stock library, just simply go up to your window on the top menu bar. Just make your way down towards the bottom to where it says stock. Just double check that you have that checked with your little check mark right there. Then you will also have access to this stock library. So once we are inside of the stock library panel, what we want to do is make sure that we choose Pixabay from this drop down menu right there as we want to be able to use this vector option. So once we select Pixabay and you selected the vector, what we need to do is just use this search bar right here just to search for coloring book. Then you'll see we have many different images that we can use inside of here. And the more you scroll down, the more images you are going to find. So these are all royalty free and you can use these however you like. They do recommend on Pixabay that you give written credit to any of the creators who made the images. And you can simply do that by putting their name at the end of your coloring book, for instance. 
or at the bottom of each page that features that image. That's entirely up to you. So what we want to do is just start dragging in some of these images and we'll go ahead and just size that using our margins. So I'll just snap that into place and I'll enlarge that. Then that is page one done straight away. So I'll make my way down with our mouse and then we can work on page two and three. I'm going to hit command or control minus just to zoom out a little bit just so we can see all of these different pages where we start adding some more images. Then we'll make our way back over to the stock library and we'll grab this cat right here. And once again, we'll just make sure that we keep him inside of the margin so he doesn't get cut off and just enlarge that a little bit. And we'll go ahead and grab another one. So you can see how quick this really is in terms of just putting together a quick free coloring book that you can print from home. But what I do want to mention at this point, if we pay attention over to the left hand side inside of all of these images, you can see we have these ones here of the outlines of the drawings and these should work perfectly fine. However, there seems to be a bit of an issue with Affinity Publisher where if we drag this in and we drop it, it will give us a bounding box as you can see, but there seems to be nothing inside of that. And some of these do work, but most of them for some reason have that same problem. As you can see, for some reason we've got that little line right there, but the rest of the image is missing. I don't know if this is specifically a problem on the Mac, so if you guys could let me know in the comments whether this happens on the PC as well. And if it does, maybe I can just email Affinity so they can address this issue with any further updates. However, you don't really need to worry. We can use all of these images right here. We're just going to have to go a different way around it. You'll find most of the time all of these white ones work perfectly fine when you drag them in. I'll go ahead and just delete that for a moment. And some of the black ones with the outlines will work, but some just won't. So it's a case of just making your way through them and finding something that might work for you. So you can see that one right there seemed to work fine with no problems, but I'll go ahead and just delete that. So the other way that we'll go ahead and grab all the images that don't work is by simply heading to the top of the menu up here where it says powered by Pixabay. If you click on that Pixabay, that then will go to the website. Then inside of the website, we want to go down to our search bar where it says all images. Go ahead and just change that to vectors. And you're going to write the exact same thing in here that you wrote before. So coloring book. And you can see we have all of those same images that we had a moment ago. So we'll find one of them that we know didn't work, which is this one right here with these two puppies. So we'll go ahead and we'll select this one right here. And all we've got to really do inside of here is right click on the image, go down to where it says copy image, go straight back into Affinity Publisher, right click and paste. And it really is as simple as that. And go ahead and just resize that to any size that you would like. And just to confirm that this didn't work on this one right here, we'll go ahead and drag that one back again. And you can see that it isn't there, but we had no problems bringing it in directly from the website. So if we go back over to the website again, and we go back and we look for another image, maybe these two ducks right here, same principle, just right click on the image, copy image, go back into Affinity Publisher, go ahead and right click and paste, and go and just resize that however you like. And you don't always have to use the phrase coloring book as long as you're in vector graphics. If we maybe look for a cow, for instance, and we see what comes up under that, we can see we've got some other options in here as well. So we've got one here that we can color in. And once again, just right click, copy image, go back into Affinity Publisher, move to another page, right click, paste that in. And just move that into place. So that is how easy it is to create yourself a free coloring book, which you can put together in next to no time at all. If you guys want to start selling coloring books and you want access to even better, higher quality images, then what I recommend that you go ahead and subscribe to Canva Pro as you're going to have so many more different options in there. So if we go inside of Canva, just like before, set up your page as an A4. Then we'll go ahead and we'll just search for the same thing as before. So we'll type coloring book. Then we just want to change to graphics over here and you can see we have all of these different images inside of here and you're going to need Canva Pro because you can see these are all pro images right here. But what that means is you don't have to give any credit whatsoever for using these images you automatically get a license for every single image inside of the pro version once you go ahead and subscribe. And just like before, it's a case of just dragging that over and just making that as big as you like and just putting that into position. Then go ahead and create yourself another page and go and grab another image. So maybe that Halloween cat one right there. Just drag that to be a little bit bigger as well. But what I also do like with Canva, if you've got a specific theme such as this cat right here with the Halloween, 
You get this magic recommendations over here where it shows you similar images to do with Halloween. So you can go ahead and look inside of there. Then we'll just go ahead and quickly resize our cat just to be a little bit smaller. And we can grab ourselves a zombie just to add multiple images to our page. So it's going to give us more to color in if you wanted to print these. And of course you are welcome to keep adding additional images to fill up your page. But I'm just going to quickly delete these. But what I do generally like about Canva as well is you have lots of images in here that are already pre-made. So we can go ahead and drag this one in and we can resize that to fit the page the best we can. So automatically we have things in the background such as the fence and the bird. And it's just a lot more content that we can go ahead and color in without necessarily having to create that yourself. So we'll go ahead and create another page and we'll just add this one right here. So once again, we'll just resize that to the size of the page. Then just drag that down. And of course you can put together an entire coloring book inside the Canva. But I also do recommend once you've completed this, that you do go ahead and export that and bring it back into Affinity Publisher as you are still going to want to set up your margins to make sure that nothing gets cut off. Unfortunately, that's something you can't do inside the Canva. So if you find that you've made yourself an entire book inside the Canva and you want to export that, all you do is go up to where it says share, go down to where it says download. Just make sure that you've got all your pages selected inside of your select pages option. Then go ahead and just choose to download that. Then you just simply import that into Affinity Publisher using the place image function. And just like I said before, you don't have to go ahead and search for Halloween. You can search for any kind of graphic that you would like and we'll go ahead and search for a sheep maybe and see what we find. And we have one right here that we can drag in. Once again, that is a pro image. So you are going to have to have the pro account or you will have a watermark through that. For me personally, I make money from Canva. So I do pay for that as part of my business. So for me, I think it's a pretty good price for what they charge a month. And of course you can sell coloring books all day long on multiple platforms. So this is something that will definitely make you money. So go ahead and try out both methods that I showed you in this video. If you do want to give Canva a go and try out some of the premium features, then they do offer a free trial, which I will leave the link in the description. I think it's around $9.99 a month, but it is a lot cheaper if you pay yearly, which is what I tend to do myself as you get two to three months of your premium for free. So that is it for today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it useful and I will see you in the next one.